So that is, I think, if I understood it correctly, right, is the language of the body in theatre. Of course, there are two completely different modalities. And sometimes, and most of the time, uh, we forget. We take the people on stage, actors, as, um, as if they're in our own modality, but they're not. The actor has become like the words of a poem. The actor is now, the body in the space, is now an aesthetic object. It has an intention. It is meant to convey an intended purpose. So, the, uh, as I always used to say to my students, the M of McDonald's that is at the corner of the street and the M on stage are not the same thing at all. It is an aesthetic object and it intends to give you a specific and special message. A, uh, it becomes a symbol. So, the actor coming in itself has become like a word. It is now carrying a meaning. So, again to go to the sort of uh, where it all originates, which is the text, which itself of course is an intention. It is meant to convey a meaning, a theme through the mean, you know, the theme carrying a meaning to convey something. Is organized itself uh, to give you the experience and also the realization through the experience of a transcendent meaning beyond the object. Uh, experience and also, uh, I keep saying it, uh, meaning. It's pointing, evoking uh, in the observer an intentional response, an affective response. Not just a cognitive response, but a total response. So it is experiential. So, all the characters in a play are, in a way, distributed, you know, in when we start um, rehearsals. We talk about, in the very beginning, of course, the content of what is the intention of the script and how are we going to convey this. And then we look at the story, which, of course, is again, itself an intentional story. And who carries the story? The actor. So the actor has become like on a chessboard or a game that we don't know, that they have their positions, that they are carrying certain points, like in music, certain notes, and in their interactions, they are weaving a physical, right, a physical e events, and through the events, we are, they are carrying us to an inner content, to a, ah, content, to pathos. So, the actor in the beginning is defining what is it that I'm carrying? It is not only, this is not a person. 
the person comes later, I am first a carrier of a meaning. I am an aesthetic object. And then I only carry that. I don't become someone else. I don't carry their world. I don't carry um, their value, uh, if we think of value not in terms of ethics, but in terms of uh, um, kind of a responsibility. <clears throat> so you keep that. And we call these characters, right? There's a character, that character. Um, a female male characters. I mean, at that point, even, it starts. A male character is not carrying the same because of the way they look, because of their energy, as a female character. The uh, unfortunate thing about really theater, I always find, is uh, uh, and because we refer much more to realism, naturalism, where we, um, you know, there's this beginning, people are doing things and so forth, and they look like us. You know, it's lifelike, and a lot of times we say, I didn't believe her. I didn't think it, he was real. Now, what do we mean by that? They are not real. They are pure artifice. An actor is, a com is on stage is a complete lie. If you want to, you know, I, lie is a negative word, but I'm not saying it as such, but it's an artifice is the word. I'm, I, I, I'm, I've been transformed. I'm not here as myself. I have now become, and I am, uh, a, again, an aesthetic object. So in terms of what value they are carrying, and what we call character, they are bringing in dynamics uh, that energy dynamics through action and reaction to move the story. Now, as long as they are moving, right, moving, it's okay. I want to get out of here, I take my coat and I leave. Okay, that's fine. When does this start becoming a dramatic tension? When does this become something that we want to communicate is when I cannot take my coat. I want to take my coat and leave and I cannot. There are obstacles. And this idea of obstacle <laughs> is really wonderful and when I learned about it in my life in theater, uh, I realized that I had no idea that this was happening all the time to us, as in Moliere, you know, it says, oh, I didn't know I was talking prose all the time. Uh, that what I expect, what I want, the direction, of my intentions are continually in flow. I want to flow towards what I want. Now, if you think of Freud's pleasure principle, I am moving towards my pleasure, what I want, desire. And then, something is not making it possible to, for me to really just flow towards it. Sometimes this is outside of me. I cannot stop right now talking and say thank you very much, you know, not even say anything to you, get my coat and leave. I have an obstacle, <laughs> yeah? We have an agreement here this morning and I have to kind of wrap up what I have to say. <laughs> And uh, I'm stuck. I'm here, I'm stuck. And uh, yeah, <laughs> right? 
So, um, and yet I want to, very, very much. I want to end this moment and get the hell out of here, right? And as my, something is holding me back, and this is a fear of some kind. But what am I afraid of? It's terribly difficult to break the rules. Very, very difficult to break the rules. Do you ever think about that? You know, I mean, tiny little things. I don't want to say hello to you today. I really don't. I don't feel too well. And I end up saying, hi, how are you? You know, and so what, what stops me? Why am I so afraid of you? I don't know. But the thing is that the dynamics of desire, me moving towards something I want, and my fear of all kinds of concerns that stop me from executing it. So what happens? my conflict smack right with the moment. I want the energy wants to go right here and something is holding it back. Obstacle. So in a day just observe, put a frame around the moment and uh, observe yourself. Observe your inner talk that just took place. What is it that you wanted? Where would you have liked to be? What would you have liked to say? And you shifted it. In acting, a lot of times, um, when I'm directing or acting, uh, there's a text, so there's what the character says. And I always think, what is it that they don't say? What is it that they are not saying? Right? That they changed it to say this. So you find, you know, plays or in films, people are kind of talking, talking, talking so nicely, you know, as if there was just like this constant, they're so sure of themselves, they know exactly what they're saying. There is attention continuously. It's almost like driving a car that the um, gear, the hand gear that you have pulled. The more you work with the obstacle, the more energy rises, the moment becomes more important, and your response, then the, you know, the, our response or the actor's response in that moment has become layered. It's much richer, right? Because all of the colors of that moment of desire and fear in collision have brought out tremendous inner texts and is playing with the energy. For instance, I mean, just a kind of, um, and this of course is not only from outside, this is a lot of happening from the inner sensoring. We are talking to ourselves, so the person who is the obstacle in many, many times is us. All of the messages that we have, the things we don't want to realize that are wrong, we're holding ourselves back. I don't know if the other person would hold us back as much as that. So, like even in a, <clears throat> in a scene where the butler comes in or the messenger comes in and has to give a message, you know, you would think, oh, okay, this is what he is doing. By God, he's serving fish or wine. So, it's, what's with it, you know, kind of do it. No. You find something right there that gives you um, enough uh, friction with the moment for that moment to jump up. So that it gives a kind of solidity to your moment. It doesn't have to be tension and tremendous fear. It's shifting your behavior. 
again, I refer to theater because uh, it makes it so much easier. Um, when a series of reactions to the environment, somebody, let us say, um, just is always thinking and always relating in terms of these are just hopeless people. This is just, the world is a hopeless place. So if I am reacting to input from the outside continually that way, it starts fossilizing really in the body. Slowly, the body has a kind of behavior, a kind of relating that is actually mirroring what I'm thinking about you. Not even specifically you, but in general. So, I, you know, actually, uh, kind of move in a special way, and we think it is a kind of presentation of myself. Uh, it's not that. <clears throat> what it is, is how I am in that moment defining our relationship, but how we're relating. So, we build the character, the whole stance of the character, from that message. What do I see? What does the character see in the moment? What is the experience of the character of the moment? And how does it connect, right? The, how, do, how do these points connect that I actually end up being someone you know who kind of is moving a certain way. Yeah. So, and it, no, so, you know, and uh, so, oh, okay. <clears throat> As opposed to, <laughs> I'm thinking, you know, um, that, um, let me say this in a different way. Um, uh, you know, so the whole thing, you know, it's, it's this whole shift suddenly, and you're really relating to a completely different person. So this is the mysterious <clears throat> and unconscious in many ways. We're relating to it. One of them is closing us down, and the other one is <clears throat> opening us up. <clears throat> and making it all very cheerful. <coughs> when you walk into a room for an interview and the person who is receiving you is sitting behind a desk, is looking at their papers for the next five moments, and you are stuck there. Right? They're not looking. They're ignoring you. And I am interpreting that. Now, what would I like? What I'm expecting is for that person to actually stand when I come in. Walk around the desk. Say, shake my hand firmly, right? Look into my eyes when you say, good morning. I'm glad you're here. As opposed to, good morning, I'm glad you're here, sit down. So, the moment has been defined immediately by not only what we say, but actually how we are behaviorally relating to each other. I value you, and I express behavior and my language, my body language, is supporting it, because that's what I'm feeling, and I'm there, right, to support you. Or the opposite. So, 
we are receiving these messages in our lives so we have a sense of how we actually relate to them and then we see them on stage. Now, as I said on stage, it is all highly organized. It is meant to give you specifically that moment. And not only the moment as a third party out here, but different points in that moment. So if there is one actor in the space, that tells us something. But when there are four, and we watch the composition, not only of their specific behavior, but of their collective behavior in the space. So one of them standing way away from three who are sitting huddled, you know, around the table and laughing, and the other one all alone is standing and looking out. So that is language also for theater. It is the way they are composed in the space, again, to tell us the story. Now, of course, this whole idea of body language is uh, with realism, as I said, with naturalism. We cannot talk about the same thing when we talk about Greek theater. So the Commedia, the Greeks, and then in the moderns, you know, when we look at Ionesco or Beckett, we see more immediately that the actors are not people. That they have, right, they have moved to another realm and their signs, symbols, to tell us something. Uh, and the behavior, because uh, we're so used to um, representational theater, uh, that we keep looking for a natural world in it. That's the way it is in my living room sense of it. And so that idea covers actually and makes it difficult to see what they really are doing. They're doing exactly what the Greek actor is doing. But it is now in the mask of what we call reality you know, very similitude, representative. And then you go to um, Commedia, it's presentative. It, that nobody behaves like in Commedia. So we are not looking for, is it believable? We are looking there more directly into the aesthetic that is communicating something, that is intentional. Uh, I think with that I will stop. And uh, to wrap it up is that the body in the space and the body of the actor, at times they look alike, but that the body is intentional in the theater. It's become an aesthetic object. But we carry our natural experience, our personal experience of life, to decipher the messages that are coming to us on stage. But one is in control, it is intended, and the other is in semi-control, most of the time really not not organized really, that we are not in control, total control of our physical self moving and responding.